Growing up, we learned that if we want a job, we should create a resume, hand it in, and hope for the best. That can work, but generally speaking, it's the bare minimum you can do. And if you want to get your first junior developer job, you need to do a little bit more to show your potential and get your foot in the door. Hello, my name is Alex from Scrimba, and I'm the host of the Scrimba podcast. On that podcast, I speak with industry experts, as well as developers who recently became junior developers. They got their first junior dev job, and I get to learn exactly how they did it. Let me tell you that very few people managed to find success just by applying. They added a little extra. And so in this video, I'm going to highlight six of my favorite interviews, and I want to draw out exactly what they did to stand out, find success, and how you can too. I'm really excited to introduce you to Anne from the Netherlands because frankly, I haven't met a developer like Anne to this day. Her approach to finding a job was just ruthless and I wanna show you exactly what she did. The first thing you need to understand about Anne is that she worked in customer support, which in the Netherlands meant she had to find a new contract every few months. Having recently had a baby, well, it wasn't the most stable situation and she wanted something with more career potential anyway, something more challenging, so she levitated towards code. With a baby, you really don't have any time to waste. Uh, time to learn and practice is precious and can only be done while the baby is napping. And of course, you want to support your family as well. This meant that Anne had no time to waste, no time for embarrassment or feeling self-conscious about applying to jobs. She realized that to make the absolute most efficient path from not knowing how to code to getting a job, she had to be really smart and deliberate about her job search. And it's kind of true what they say, you can't score without a goal. So Anne looked at local job boards in her area in the Netherlands and tried to figure out roughly what kind of requirements they were looking for. This only painted a rough kind of picture. Anne also understood that you just don't know what you don't know. And the only way to truly know if you're ready for a job is to apply and see what they say. So very early on, just a few months of practice coding and Anne was applying to about 25 jobs in her area. She pretty much expected they would reject her, right? Because she was so new. And for the most part, they did. But crucially, with every rejection, Anne would follow up and say, hey, I'm new to development. I really want to become a junior dev. What are the things that made you say no? What can I improve for next time? And she got some amazing feedback that I learned in our podcast interview. One of the companies I applied to told me that uh, the things I had on my GitHub page were okay, but the basic structure of it was a little bit outdated. So I needed a little bit more experience in new things like React hooks and stuff like that. And that is where I joined in on Scrimba to develop those uh, extra little bits. Having incorporated this feedback and created something of a feedback loop where what she was hearing from the recruiters and the hiring managers informed the things she would learn next. She wasn't wasting any time. She then managed to become a developer in just five months. Five months is a remarkably short period of time to get a job. You sometimes hear these kind of numbers thrown around on social media and I always raise an eyebrow. I asked Anne-Marie straight up in the interview if what she said was true and she assured me. The only thing I want to add as I tell this story is that not all jobs are created equal. You probably couldn't go from, you know, not knowing how to code to working in Silicon Valley in five months, but possibly one of the best places to look for entry-level jobs is in your local area. Let's be clear, Anne became a junior developer, which is an opportunity to earn while you learn. It's amazing. Next up, let me tell you about my friend, Karan. Karan and I have always had a very friendly relationship. He's such a nice guy. I wanna highlight early on that Karan was a member of the Scrimba Discord community, and I knew of him because he was always so helpful. And I really think that's one of the things that played into Karan's success. It was never enough just to consume and take. He was always giving back to the community by answering coding questions. And when you do this, you almost enter a sort of coding job simulator where you are given dynamic problems with no obvious solution you have to kind of follow up to get clarification it makes you a better communicator a better problem solver all these things my point is karen was putting in the hard work and that's unavoidable but when he started to apply for jobs he felt a bit discouraged 
because so many of them said that they want two or three years experience for junior developers, which Karen did not have, or he barely maybe had a year and a half of experience, but certainly no professional experience. It's crazy because the job ad actually sort of pushed away someone with Karen's background, but in the end, they couldn't hire him quick enough. I, I got a call in 15 minutes after my second round and they told me, uh, <laughs> they told me that I need to join from tomorrow, <laughs> which was... Oh um, my God. <laughs> yeah, everything was going super fast, you know, like I didn't expect to crack the interview process and get my job in my first interview. And so there's really two things I'm highlighting here. The first is that you have to put in the work and helping other people is a great way to get ahead. It's not all altruistic being a helpful, you know, supporter of other new coders. It's actually a great way for you to learn and get ahead and leave something of an exhaust trail about all the things you've been learning and the helpfulness you've displayed in the community. Employers love that. But also if you see a job that you don't feel like you quite meet the requirements for, just go for it. Seriously, the worst they can say is no. A lot of people think that, well, I want to wait a few months and I don't want to apply today, then again in a few months. They don't care. Nobody's paying attention to these things. If anything, do what Amory did and start a discussion. It's true that years of experience might correlate to ability, but it does not cause ability. It's like, it's not the years, it's for life in those years, that kind of thing. You could be coding for 20 minutes a day for three years, or you could be doing the front-end developer career path at Scrimba or an intensive boot camp and getting a whole new intense experience. Seriously, just go for it like Karen did. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. I'm trying to pick out diverse stories with different backgrounds and ambitions. Justin really is quite a unique example of somebody who was changing career a little bit later in life. At the age of 33 and having worked in petroleum engineering for 10 years, can you imagine that building a career for 10 years, the pandemic came and it all came to a halt. That's crazy. But Justin, to his credit, didn't waste any time. He started to learn to code and really double down on his passion for coding, even though he didn't have any real experience. He'd done a little bit of dabbling here and there, and that's what gave him the idea. But listen, Justin applied, and you might not believe this, he applied to 100, I'm looking at it now, he was so specific, 163 jobs, and he was keeping a detailed record of every application, which is why you can know this advice is good. Because eventually Justin sort of realized that this isn't working. He was going incredibly broad and he was presented with a few different challenges. First of all, he was looking for a local job, which reduced the sort of options compared to a remote job, for example. It's a double-edged sword because there are less options, but they're less competitive as well. Justin was really looking for front-end roles, really focusing on React in particular. But what he kind of realized is that even though he had been learning React, a lot of the ideas transferred to other frameworks, the methodologies and thinking like a programmer, understanding how to write tests and CSS and these kind of things. So it kind of enabled him over time to sort of broaden his job search and position himself in a certain way. Another challenge Justin faced with his positioning was that he had become quite a senior person in his previous job and his title was Petroleum Engineer. That was confusing because he wanted to represent himself as an earnest junior, ready to learn and improve his coding ability, but also felt like there were things that would transfer from his previous role. Like you can't be a seen in a senior position without having great communication skills. Not to mention the fact that he was so dedicated to that job, any new employer could see that Justin was serious about his career and the things he was doing. So after over 160 job applications, Justin gradually sort of tweaked his LinkedIn profile and I'll share with you the most highly impactful things he did so you can too. He set an amazing profile picture. In his bio, he didn't write petroleum engineer, he wrote the job he wanted because that's what recruiters are looking for. He didn't write aspiring front-end developer, he just wrote front-end developer. There's no need to put that aspiring word there. If you've written a line of React code, you are a React developer, okay? He also built out a portfolio and wrote about it in LinkedIn posts. In my experience, when you post on LinkedIn, that tends to correlate with an influx of views to your profile and messages from recruiter, messages from recruiters, sorry. 
The point is, if you're just passive on LinkedIn, you might not see the best results, but because Justin was active and always updating his profile, also completing LinkedIn certificates, he managed to get a recruiter to reach out to him. I love that. He was applying, 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 and in the end, it was a recruiter that came to him because really, he managed to change the way he positions himself. It's not like he learned a bunch of new coding skills in three weeks that changed the entire game. He was more or less the same candidate, but he reframed it slightly. So let that be a lesson to you. Really nail your positioning. At Scrimber, we have the front-end developer career path. It's a curriculum to help you go from not knowing to code to being able to build projects independently. I also host the podcast, which is all about career advice and becoming a professional junior developer. One thing that comes up a lot is this debate between a shotgun approach so imagine a bunch of pellets which have got a very broad spread or the sniper laser approach where you go after a very specific job. Justin was employing the shotgun approach, right? He applied to 160 plus jobs. Well, Steya from Lithuania, she was very much a sniper. She searched and researched three, only three companies in her local area. And the benefit of doing this is that although she was hedging her bets, she could do in-depth research on every company, learn the skills that they typically hire for, and also make connections within the company. Going back to my introduction where I talked about you know, applying and hoping for the best, it's just not good enough. Like if you can network and connect with someone, if they can give you a referral or at least testify to your character and your enthusiasm, that's gonna put you miles ahead. So Ostea, believe it or not, she has a master's in law. She'd been studying law and also started a family. She told me stories about how she would push the push chair with one hand and read books about Java in the other. Truly an inspiring woman. But what you really need to take away is that rather than just apply to a bunch of companies, she found a friend of hers or remembered a friend of hers whose husband worked at this development agency that had a fantastic reputation in Lithuania. They have international offices, exciting projects, innovative technology programs. She knew that's where she could build a career. And so she reached out to a friend and arranged coffee with her friend's husband, I think. And this is really important. She didn't say, hey, hi, my name's Ostea, can you refer me? Because that would be an example of just trying to take. And when you try and take without giving anything, you're really not going to get very far. Rather, Ostea approached the whole thing in earnest and she really just asked very sincere questions about how the company hires, what their training programs look like, what technologies they use. And through that, by chance, and only by chance, and I think partly due to her enthusiasm and hard work, she'd been putting in a lot of work to become a better dev. And when you do that, it's hard for people to ignore. They can really see how much you care and I think that makes you an awesome candidate. I think then her husband gave her a referral and managed to uh, give her an introduction to the company, where again, Ostea was hoping to enroll in the sort of bootcamp program, the intern training program they do every year, but managed to sidestep it because she'd been working so hard. So, so hopefully you're starting to see a theme here. There's no way around the fact that you need to be a hardworking, passionate coder, but there are ways that you can almost get in through the side door and improve your prospects. Anne, Karan, Justin, possibly Ostea to some extent use LinkedIn or some kind of job board to find their job, which is what you probably expected. But Benedicta from Norway, would you believe this? She found a job in the developer tools console in Google Chrome. She was playing around just exercising her curiosity on Norway's biggest newspaper, just seeing how the code worked. When she saw on a console in Norwegian, an introduction to come and apply for a job which was crazy. I want to be clear that this wasn't the first opportunity Benedicta came about. In fact, she'd pretty much been learning and applying for a long time and felt quite defeated. I remember towards Christmas time, she was like, all right, over the new year, I'm gonna take a break. I'm not sure if I'll continue. What's crazy is just a few weeks later, she found this opportunity and as you can guess, got the job. It's kind of like that meme where you're digging for diamonds and turn back because you're one pickaxe throw away from the reward. It's an amazing example and why you should continue. So yes, it was around the new year that the Norwegian company got back to her and she entered this very uh, interesting interview process where there were a few candidates. I don't think it was clear whether they were being pitted against each other or potentially there were multiple roles. 
What Benedicta kind of learned from the interview process is that even though she was a good coder, she wasn't hands down the best coder. She was never going to get the job on her coding merits alone. And let that be a very important lesson because previously she'd worked in customer success, generally a very nice person to talk to, surely pleasant to work with. They said, you know what, you have potential and we like your communication style. You're very patient and well, you're clear and all these kind of things. And so they, they actually hired two candidates, Benedicta alongside another candidate who maybe had a bit more coding prowess, but a little bit less communication skills maybe. And the idea was that they could kind of like learn from each other and grow together, which I just think is the most incredible opportunity like what more could you want well there you go in every case every one of these amazing developers could have just applied and hoped for the best or they or if they did hear back and it wasn't successful they could have just felt bad about it which is okay it happens but the point is they kept persevering success was just around the corner and by applying just the slightest creative tactic you know you can kind of create that opportunity for yourself and I really hope by sharing these stories that you have some, you know, your cogs are turning and you feel a bit inspired. Maybe some of these ideas resonate with you, maybe they don't. But the point is, if just one does, I'll be very pleased. Thank you so much for watching. Do take care to subscribe to the Scrimba YouTube channel. We are all about helping you become a developer. And if you would like to, a professional junior developer. That is in fact what my podcast, the Scrimba podcast, is all about. So hopefully I'll hear from you soon.